Okay, so I'm going to have a short video uh, for those of you who need it um, for lab number three, the colorimetry lab, on how to make a standard curve um, using your absorbance values that you generated during lab um, using Excel, and how to calculate your or figure out your unknown PNP concentration using that standard curve using formulas built into Excel, all right, instead of hand graphing it. So if you've never done this type of uh, graph or linear regression, on Excel, um, hopefully this will help you. Um, keep in mind that I am using uh, software for Macintosh, so mm -hmm. if you are on a PC, um, it may vary, but it shouldn't vary too much. Okay, so it should be okay for you to use. Okay, so I've pulled up Microsoft Excel, and I made uh, two tables, and these tables are your data recording table one and two from your lab report. Um, you're going to need to put them into your lab report at some point, so uh, if you create them in Excel, you'll be able to copy and paste them into Word, which makes it easier. Um, you can format them however you want. You can see the way I formatted. It does not have to be this way. Um, you can do however you want, as long as the data is there. So what you can see here is everything that uh, we did in lab. Um, you should have your values written down for your uh, known P&P concentrations. Your absorbance values, I'm going to enter those in for the ones I have, all right? But these are the ones that you uh, figured out during lab, during the lab session. So keep in mind that we are uh, measuring the uh, absorbance values in relation to the concentration of PNP or the number of moles of PNP that was in each tube, all right? So obviously the more dilute you go, the lower the absorbance values. So the first thing you need to do is take an average, because we did these in duplicate so that we would get a more accurate reading. Um, and you can let uh, Excel take averages for you. So there's a variety of ways. One, if you go up to formulas, uh, you can find different formulas. Or if you go up to the, the sigma mark here, the little formula, you'll see that there's an average there. So you can click average. Um, and then it'll ask you what cells do you want to average, all right? So for our purposes, the cells are covered up here, but what we want is F5 and F6. So I'm going to type in F5, comma, F6, and enter, and it will now calculate an average. Now, you can do the same thing for all the other, all the other wells. Um, if you want to uh, create, do it manually, that's fine, but a very simple trick is to uh, take your cursor and hover it over the bottom right corner of the cell that you just made the average for, and it will turn into a black cross. And if you click and drag it down to all the other wells, it'll basically copy the formula uh, for you for the remaining duplicates that you've done. Okay, um, Your cells have to be in a specific order to do this, so make sure they're kind of in this linear order for this to be uh, effective. If you always are worried whether or not it looks right, you can calculate it manually to double check. All right, the next thing you need to do is figure out how many nanomoles of PNP were in each of those tubes that gave you the absorbance. So I did the first one for you, and on page uh, six of your lab handout, I showed you an example calculation for how I got this number, um, but I'll show it to you again um, here. So to figure out how many nanomoles, uh, we ultimately just need to figure out how many moles of PNP is in the tube. So that's dependent upon two things. The first is the concentration of the stock PNP that we used. So remember, our stock PNP okay, was equal to one millimolar. One millimolar is equal to one times 10 to the negative three moles per liter. That's what a millimolar stands for. So we know the concentration and we know how many moles per liter are in the concentration. Okay, all you do is you multiply that by the volume you use to get that measurement. So we added, if you look at table one, we added 100 microliters of um, PMP to that tube. Well, 100 microliters is equal to 100 times 10 to the negative 6 liters, right? That's just converting microliters to liters, all right? So let's do the conversion and erase that. And now what you're doing is you're just multiplying 1 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter times 100 times 10 to the negative 6 liters. Our liters are going to cancel out. When you multiply uh, scientific notation, you add the exponents. 
All right, so let's multiply the numbers first. One times 100 is 100 times, you add the exponents, negative six plus negative three times 10 to the negative nine moles. All right, that's our final value. 10 to the negative nine is nano, so we can convert this to 100 nanomoles. And that's how I got the 100 nanomol value for that two. So you go back to the nanomoles per PMP, and you type in 100. And I'll let you do the other three tubes, but you want to get the number of nanomoles of PMP in each tube corresponding to the uh, absorbance values um, for that. Once you have those two, then you can make your graph. The nanomoles of PNP is going to be on your x-axis, and the absorbance values are going to be on your y-axis. To make a graph, just highlight an empty cell somewhere, and you're going to go up to charts, and the chart you're going to select is a marked scatter chart. And it will open up a blank chart here, and I just, I'll just i resize it so we can see. To input your data, you're going to right-click on the chart and click Select Data. Um, there's a variety of ways you can input your data. For me, I always just add a series, and you can name this however you want. I'll just name it um, PNP. I'll just name it PNP for now. The X value is the nanomoles of PNP per tube. And you can just highlight it. They don't have to be in any particular order, but they at least have to be associated with their absorbance values. So the absorbance has to be next to them. The Y values is our A410. Highlight that. And you, you can click OK, and it will make a graph for you. On your graph, you should see your data points. On the y-axis, you should see your absorbance values. On the x, I have mine blanked out, but you should be able to see numbers that correspond to the number of nanomoles of PNP per tube. The first thing you want to do is label all of your chart. So here, you want to title something descriptive. Um, you could just write PNP standard curve is fine. Um, but you can make it whatever you want. And if you go up to Chart Layout and go to Axis Titles, you can label all the axes. So the title below the axis is going to be what that title of that column is, so nanomoles P and P. All right, and then the title uh, on the y-axis is uh, simply A410, or absorbance at 410 nanometers. So let's actually write that out. Absorbance 410 nanometers. Okay, so that's your properly drawn graph. So what we need to do to figure out for the unknowns is we need to do a linear regression on our data. So right click on a data point and add a trend line. And <clears throat> there are a variety of types of trend lines. Um, you want to click linear. And before you exit out of linear, go to the options and click on display equation on chart. And if you want, you don't have to, but you can click on display R squared value on chart. And I'll tell you what that is in a second. And then click OK. And you'll see these two numbers pop up. I'm going to um, just make them bigger so that we can see them. All right, so a couple of things. We have our line intercept equation here, y equals mx plus b. So the 0 0.0045 is our slope, 0 0.0016 is our y intercept, which should be very close to zero. All right. The R squared value is 0.99973. Uh, this is a regression coefficient. This it's, it can tell you a lot of things. For our purposes, it's telling us how uh, accurate our data points are, how kind of linear our data points are. If it's as close to one as possible, it means it's it's accurate essentially. If you're really low, um, it can tell you that maybe you have some data points that are way off. All right. Regardless, you're still going to use this to figure out your unknown. All right, for your unknown, you have, uh, in table two, you should have absorbances for all of your dilutions. I don't have any yet, because I didn't do this part, but I'm just going to make some up. So I'm going to put in 965, uh, 9, 0.955, I'm going to do 0.501, and 0 0.493, 0.254, 0.235, 0 0.125, 0 0.114. Okay. So same thing as before, you're gonna, you want to calculate an average for all these values, okay? So again, um, we can do that real quickly. So it's F20 and F21. And then it will tell you the average, you can drag and drop, and now we have our averages. All right, 
So first thing to keep in mind is you, you can only use an unknown where the absorbance falls within the range of absorbances you got in your standard curve. So 0.96 is well above our 0.452, and 0.497 is also above our 0.52, our maximal value. So these two values we can't even use in our calculations because they're, they're too high. And this is the whole purpose of why we did dilutions for our samples. If, but we can use 0.2445 and we can use this 0.1195 because they both fall in range. So here's what we know. We know our linear intercept or our line equation. And we know an absorbance for an unknown. And our absorbance corresponds to y. y is the absorbance. x is the nanomoles of p and p. So now if we know the whole equation, right, um, we can solve for x and that'll give us the number of nanomoles in that unknown tube. Okay, so let me show you how we do that. So our line equation again was y equals 0.0045x plus uh, 0.0016. We can rearrange this equation by solving for x. x equals y minus 0.0016 divided by 0 0.0045. And why is the absorbance? So we know why, all right, for our unknown. That's something that we measured for our unknown. So let's erase y and actually plug in what we knew. We know it's 0.2445. I'm just going to write 0.24 to simplify it. What we get from this is 52.97. And remember that. What's our what's our unit? We're measured. What's this? Uh, Unit X is nanomoles, so this is nanomoles of P and P. Okay, so 52.97. We go back to our Excel, and in here we type in 52.97. And let's do it again for this one. So this one, uh, our 1 to 8 dilution is 0.1195. So go back to our equation, and we can just write this whole thing over again. 0.1195 minus 0 0.0016 divided by 0 0.0045 all right, equals 26.2 nanomoles of P and P. Okay, so go back to our 26.2 nanomoles. Okay, so we basically figured out the nanomoles. Now we have to finally figure out what is the concentration of the original uh, PNP unknown tube that you signed out for in lab. So we have to do two things. One, we have to convert the nanomoles of PNP that we calculated back to millimolar. And two, we have to make sure we account for the dilution factor and multiply by that dilution factor. Okay, so let's go back to our calculations. And we have 52.97 nanomoles. All right. We know that. And to convert the concentration, we have to account for how much volume we used of that unknown PMP. And in every single one of those unknown tubes, we used 100 microliters. All right? Now, if you look, nanomole, whoops, equals, so nanomole per microliter, nanomole equals. 1 times 10 to the negative 9 mole, and a microliter equals 1 times 10 to the negative 6 liters, right? If you s divide these, remember we divide exponents, you subtract, that means that we have 1 times 10 to the negative 3 moles over 1 liter, right? Which, if you remember from our very early calculation, is one millimolar, all right? So essentially, a nanomole per microliter is equal to a millimolar. So go back to our calculation, 52.97 nanomoles divided by 100 microliters equals 0.5297 nanomoles per microliter, which equals millimolar. Okay, so that's how we calculate the number of animals back to um, molarity. 
the last thing you have to do to figure out your final concentration is you need to multiply by our dilution factor. Our dilution factor for this tube was 1 to 4, so we multiply by 4, right? And what you get is 2.12 millimolar. And that is our final concentration, or based on that tube, that's what our final concentration for our unknown is. So go back to your Excel and type in 2.12 millimolar. You're going to do the same thing for the other two that you measured. So we, so going back to our calculations, all right, we do 26.2 nanomoles of PNP. No, I don't need to write that. Okay, divided by the 100 microliters we were using. And again, that equals 0.262 millimolar, because nanomoles per microliter equals a millimolar. We have to last account for our dilution factor. So this was our 1 to 8 diluted tube, so that means the dilution factor is 8. Okay, and if you multiply this by 8, what you get is 2.09, or essentially 2.1 millimolar. Okay? Going back to the chart, we're going to enter 2.1 millimolar. What you'll realize is these two are very close to each other, and they should be because they're coming from the same unknown tube. What we're trying to figure out is what is the concentration of that original unknown. So the last thing you should do is take the average of both of these and you'll get a very accurate number. So we're going to take the average, so I'm going to type in equals average, or you can go to the formula page and find the average button. And you highlight both these cells and it will calculate the average for you. And this is our final number, all right? 2.11 millimolar. You make sure you got to write millimolar next to it um, in your report. All right, so it's basically we've created a standard curve. We did a linear regression and got the uh, line formula. And then we found the um, dilutions that fit into our absorbance ranges and used those to calculate the nanomoles of PNP by plugging the y value into our equation and solving for x. We back converted to millimolar multiplied by our dilution factor, and then if we had more than one sample that gave us a, a reading, we took the average of those, and we now can be pretty certain that our unknown concentration was 2.1 millimolar. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, as always, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. But these two tables should go in your results section. The graph, once you're done labeling it and making sure it all looks good, you can right click on the graph and it will allow you to save it as a picture and you can save it as a JPEG and put that in your lab report as well. During in your results section, you want to include all your calculations that you did uh, and you don't want to talk too much about what, what the results were, you just want to present the results as raw data. And then in the discussion is when uh, you talk about what you did and that you're using a standard curve to figure out the unknown. All right, as always, email me if you have any questions. Uh, but I hope this helped you out.